Yeah. Um, yeah, I would like to present you Wolfgang Teubert. Wolfgang Teubert had started his career in Germany in the Institute of German Language in Mannheim. Um, he was first working on syntax. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, uh, and then he has uh, uh, participated in different corpus linguistic programs, creating national uh, language corpora at Heinzelwein. And actually, uh, the last part of his career he spent at Birmingham, at the University of uh, Birmingham, uh, being uh, yeah, you were head of the chair of. The yeah, it's all good. Yeah, yeah. All right, then I was you. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, yes, I, I will talk about, uh, well, uh, discourse being the object of uh, discourse theory, uh, <laughs> rather than uh, what is now often uh, in the focus of what discourse analysts do, looking at uh, what's happening in the heads of people who speak will take part in the discourse. So uh, this is, uh, uh, well, uh, what my talk is about uh, against uh, well, a cognitive approach to discourse analysis or discourse studies. Uh, so uh, the example I'm using is uh, same-sex marriage, and uh, whether same-sex marriage is a human right. Uh, here are some examples uh, taken from my corpus, which is uh, Google. Uh, uh, it's uh, well, uh, not as well uh, understood as other corpora, but it's, uh, at least it gives us a lot of stuff to think about. The uh, United Nations Declaration of Human Rights, the first one, men and women of full age without any invitation, due to race or nationality or religion, have the right to marry and to found a family. That is, comes up quite frequently. Uh, second one, marriage has always been a covenant between a man and a woman, which is by its nature ordered towards the population and education of children and the unity and well-being of spouses. So it uh, has been uh, always a covenant or there is nothing uh, that we can change about it. It's, it's uh, universal. And uh, it's uh, something that has to do with nature and not culture. So we can't just change it and we want to change it. And this is then expressed whenever people talk about uh, same sex marriage as a human right. So doesn't this mean same sex marriage is a human right? Or marriage, and in particular, same sex marriage is a human right? And the European Court of Human Rights has ruled that same sex marriage is not a human right. So, what does this tell us about the meaning of the word marriage or the word same sex marriage? Is marriage is part of the meaning of marriage that is a human right? Uh, should it be part of the meaning or should it, uh, what about same sex marriage? Is that a human right or not a human right? Which shows us there is no common denominator for meaning. Meaning just cannot be extracted from processing in some corpusy way. All the citations we have for it, we have to uh, find out every time that uh, discourse is plurivocal. People say different things about the meaning of words, they use words in different ways. And therefore, we just, uh, when we talk about uh, what words mean, we shouldn't look into what people think they mean, we should look at what is being said about these words. That is what the wrong matter. Escape? Escape, escape. Can I escape here somewhere? Just use the... Uh, I'll do that. So, uh, yeah, that's easy. Yeah. So, uh, the perspective of discourse analysis, well, we, we talked this morning about it, uh, uh, Johannes talked about it. Uh, uh, is meaning in the subject's heads or is it uh, in the participants' contributions? 
Well, Hillary Tubman, of course, said many, many years ago, 30 years, 40 years ago, we cannot look into people's heads. But then, of course, he didn't think that we should look at the discord in those days. So uh, the meaning is what things are in reality. Later, it changed as my introduced internal realism, which is very close to discourse analysis, but it's my fault in that. Uh, should we, should we look, should we, if we could, should we look into people's heads? Well, what would they tell us? I mean, what could we find out? Perhaps people are rude, and perhaps people, what they say is based on facts and logic. But I very much doubt it. And I also doubt that, uh, well, logic is something universal, but it's pretty much man-made. And uh, uh, people don't even understand the syllogism, as Louis had told us. And we also have no idea what a fact is, because facts have to be somehow, well, contributed to the discourse. And so they are discourse objects, and they don't have anything to do with reality. And anyway, I mean, even if there were people, people were behaving uh, according to rules, could we ever predict what people are going to say next? And if we can't, then what does it, what sense does it make to look into people's heads? I wonder. Most contributions to discourse are reactions to previous. Contributions. People say things because they want to be noticed by their peers. In the old days, when we still were all uh, on the trees, uh, chimpanzees or what, <coughs> then it would be booming. We would try to get the intention of someone else in our group by booming them, by stalking them. These days we have language, and that means we can address more people at the same time than chimpanzees. But when they say something, they normally react to something said previously. They never start at point zero. They, they comment on something that has been said before. They repeat it, or they recombine elements of what has been said before. Before they commute it, they reformulate it, they reject it. Sometimes things that have been said before. This is how it sometimes comes about that something new is being said. So what we do when we talk, when we react to something that has been said, we use elements that have been used before, but we place them in the lexical items or phrases or single words. We can, we can place them in a new context. I and mean, if you place them in a new context, then this has an effect on its meaning. It adds to what has been said about this work already. It's something new that has so far never been said in this exact way. And so each time we use a word, uh, not just by repeating what has been said before, but by putting it in somehow a new context, slightly new context, then we add to the meaning of that word or lexical item or phrase or whatever it might be. So whenever somebody says something about same-sex marriage, they will add to it there. And humans, uh, people have achieved their goal, and they have effected a change if somebody else picks up on what they have said. So if I say something new and nobody picks up on it, which is normally the case, then it just won't have had any effect. And, and it's not, it hasn't had an impact on this goal. But if it's picked up by other people, and then maybe repeated more and more, then it will have changed discourse, and it will have changed the meaning of the, this lexical item. Okay, I did it again. Anyway, I'm, I'm learning. So, uh, as I said, uh, discourse is extremely repetitive. <coughs> Most of it what we find is repetition. We also find variation, but repetition is, uh, is pretty dominant, it's a dominant phenomenon. So uh, I looked up uh, on, uh, in Google, uh, uh, manage this, uh, manage this, uh. and there were 362 occurrences of managers of wonderful institutions. 
it was a long time ago, it was said for the first time, the Belgian market, that must have been about 60, 70 years ago, 70 years ago, probably so, 80 years ago. That's a wonderful institution that I want to live in an institution. Uh, uh, that is a real eye opener, but well, then I thought, that sounds a bit original, but until I found out, well, that's the title of a book of quotes about marriage. So, so this was why it is repeated all the time. Marriage was a sacrament, well, we know that. Uh, actually, it was declared a sacrament rather late. It was in the end, it was the, the Council of Trent in 1556 when it was declared. <coughs> A sacrament. Before that time, it was not a sacrament according to the Catholic Church. And since then, only uh, if an uh, ordained priest has carried out the ceremony, it will be recognized as a threat of marriage. Marriage is a crazy thing that is the title of a Korean film, like in the, the translation of the English title. Uh, marriage is a private affair, that is a US film. Marriage is a sacred vow, well, that we heard often in that. Marriage is a mosaic, something I've never heard before, it sounded very strange to me. But then I found out, well, this is the motto, uh, the emblem of the Hill Wives. Uh, and there seems to be something quite common, widely present uh, uh, in the United States. Marriage is a sort of construction, so it's amazing how many sort of construction there were, 55. I came up with this, and I found that quite remarkable. Marriage is a waste of money, it's also not original. Marriage is a wretched institution, that's repeated by the 18 times from Google, and marriage is purely a statement to others, not to your partner, where that occurs only once. And unless it's repeated, I've now repeated it, so, so it has had, it has made an impact, and now uh, uh, we can. Uh, Hopefully, they'll say, well, this will come up more frequently. Now, is this all taken together and what I have said before, what I've quoted before, is that the meaning of marriage? Well, it's part of what has been said about marriage, and nothing that has not been said about marriage is part of its meaning. So without people, without there being a discourse, there would, would be no such thing as marriage. Uh, chimpanzees don't marry. I don't have the words for it. <laughs> so so uh, it's a social institution, and social institutions, even uh, John Searle agrees to that, are creations, this and the creations of this book, they don't exist by themselves. They are you no know, ontological reality. So, meaning, I would say, that is quite important to me. Meaning is out only discourse, no merit outside of discourse. <laughs> and the meaning of a lexical item is what we know about the object uh, this uh, lexical item stands for. And of course, this is not just an object of the world outside, but it's the object that we together, that the language community, have constructed. Uh, in their interactions, in their negotiations. So, the meaning of uh, uh, the knowledge uh, that we know about, everything we know about marriage, that makes up the meaning of the lexical of marriage, and the same goes, of course, for same sex marriage. Culture is, as I see it, well, I said something. Uh, uh, that the knowledge that is shared in exchange in a discourse community. So it's something, as I said before, something that can be taught. It's not something that we can ever get hold of by imitating what other people do or by trial and error. Sometimes some people try to understand marriage by trial and error, as they put second, third, or fourth, fifth time. <laughs> that I think, well, uh, what all we know about marriage is uh, what has been said, uh, said about it, that's the knowledge we have about uh, uh, this discourse object. And knowledge in this sense means, well, knowledge is not something that's true or wrong or false. Knowledge is everything that has been said, whether we accept it or not, it's there in discourse and therefore it forms part of what can be known about 
marriage. Why is there discourse? Well, it's, it's dialogue. I mean, uh, any monologue must at some point come to an end. And if no one reacts to it, the discourse would have stopped. So we have to look at discourse as dialogue. And this shows, well, if we come up with new ideas, it's in reaction to ideas that others already have expressed. So without anyone else having expressed an idea, I wouldn't start saying anything about marriage. There have been other people saying things about marriage and about same-sex marriage, and they've done so. I wouldn't sit here, stand here, and, 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 uh, and talk to you about marriage. So uh, it's dialogue act. Uh, it's not what's happening in my head. Nothing's happening in my head. I, of course, think of myself as a very intentional person. I think I do have intentionality and that I know what I'm talking about. But actually, you, you have no evidence for, uh, well, me knowing that I know what I'm talking about. Uh, uh, all you uh, have access to is what I've actually said. Uh, that is very similar to what other people have said before, necessarily. So, let's go back to the same sex marriage as uh, is a human right. This comes up in Canadian discourse 36 times. And same sex marriage is not a human right, comes up in Canadian discourse 56 times. So, and uh, there have been repeated uh, discussions of same-sex marriage in the Canadian Parliament. And I have chosen the, the discussion uh, that happened on the 16th of September in 2003, and here are some selected dialogue contributions that tell us how such a dialogue, or the, well, carries on. <coughs> so somebody said, Basic human rights include freedom of religion, freedom of speech, freedom of conscience, freedom of association, and equality under the law. Same sex marriage is not a human right. It's not mentioned up there. So, so this is uh, uh, what this person thought about it. So, it's not a human right. And uh, contrary to what the leader of the Canadian Alliance says, uh, same sex marriage is a matter of human rights. It's a matter of fundamental justice. So yes, I mean, that is, of course, I mean, the, the feast today for argumentation. If they say, well, it's fundamental justice, and then how can you react to that? I mean, can you just claim it? No country in, the, in this world recognizes same-sex marriage as a human right, not even Belgium or the Netherlands, the only two other countries that had same-sex legislation on marriage. That was in 2003, so a long time ago. So it has changed, and now there are plenty of countries. But the first country actually that accepted same sex marriage and not just a, a partnership, a partner union, that was Spain. Interestingly, very, very, very Catholic country. It's amazing. It is my conclusion that, that the inclusion of same sex couples in the institution of marriage. Is not required as a matter of fundamental human rights, however, also not required. Would it not be possible to legally define marriage to include homosexual couples? Yes, but that decision will need to be based on criteria other than human rights. So, discourse makes progress, it changes, it evolves. First, we had some people saying, no, same sex marriage, not a human right. Or same sex marriage, yes, a human right. And then comes something new, a new idea, uh, a new context, where we could say there is such a thing as same sex marriage, or it's got nothing to do with human rights. So this is how discourse evolves, regardless of what people are thinking, what they are saying. They are reacting to each other. What they think doesn't matter. Two, three, three, three. Uh, does it matter who speaks? Well, subjects are engaged in dialogue, and we have looked at dialogue. They receive input and then wait output. Subjects believe in their intentionality and rationality. But should we really believe them? 
with your trust group. This group analysis has no access to the subject's mind, and therefore this group analysis should not be inputted in our campaign. People say what they say. <coughs> this group analysis is not concerned with what a given subject thinks or says about management, with, with what is repetition, what is innovation. And here's a nice example how we get a bit innovative this could can be. Uh, post structuralists claim that the subject is an effect of discourse. Said by Leonard Jackson in 2014, <coughs> and he wasn't the first one to say that. He was reacting to what other people had said before him. Both Foucault and Lacan concur in thinking the subject is an effect of discourse. They were Anthony Eastall and Catherine Elsie in 2001. Both Butler and Foucault, so we have exchanged Lacan for Butler. I <laughs> the subject is the effect. Uh, the subject is the effect of discourse. And then we have in way that we send for Danny Dad's understanding of the speaking subject. What I call the subject is the effect of discourse. And finally, that all subject is not simply a linguistic construct, an illusion produced by language effects. So uh, you can say everything you want to, but you have, of course, to stay within your network. There is a network of those saying the subject is the effect of discourse. There's a different network of people saying, well, it's not simply produced by language effects. Uh, the subject is not simply produced by language effects, at least by all subject isn't. Okay, some conclusions. Subject is a discourse construct just like marriage. The subject that we needed for discourse analysis, I don't think necessarily do. The subject is <laughs> claims to be driven by facts and logic, and that would be predictable if true. Or by Pierce's, perhaps it is driven by Pierce's induction process, and that it's got nothing to do with logic. At least, no, at least no induction as seen by the later peers, not by the young peers, but the later peers of course would say induction. Well, that's, that's uh, enlightening in the frame of the mind. He, well, he didn't talk about dialogue, for him it was all happening in a solitary mind. And at least it has nothing to do with, uh, uh, with facts and logic. Discourse, so uh, as I would see, and as other people would see, I mean, I copied this, I reacted, said, said that it's reacting to rumors, makes us rumor. This is all poetic, it's evolving itself, and gradual, unpredictable, and it is driven by dialogue. And so, uh, what we should do in this analysis is to study these lists. Discourse networks where people say the same things and where they say different things. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are there any questions? Have an equilibrated, healthy society, people will not have knowledge. Thank you. I don't think that uh, all the ethnic groups we know about do have the institution of marriage. I think there are well, uh, ethnic uh, groups where they don't have marriage. Uh, and, uh, I think if you look at it, uh, country like Australia, uh, uh, more of, well, I think more of half of the people living in partnerships are not married. And I think Australia is more than thriving as a country. So I don't think, it, it, it's not, essentially, it's not, I think, a necessity uh, uh, 
kind of uh, natural necessity to have language in order for human groups to survive. Yes. Yes. On the first slide, you say that uh, uh, the European Court of Human Rights yes. is already ruled that that is not. Yes. Uh, is that true? That is true. That was a, a, a long time ago. That was, I think, uh, in the 90s. Uh, in the 90s, uh, early 90s, 92 or something like that, as I remember. That was, yeah. Uh, they said it's not a human right. And Do you think all, uh, their attitudes may have changed? In those I think it would have changed now. Yeah. I, I, I certainly think. I mean, now that I think quite a number of countries, especially in Europe, have recognized marriage. Yeah, so that's what I'm think. asking. So well, they, they will have to adapt to that legislation or whatever that they have to do with fiction. Yeah, I have actually three questions, but I'm, I'm afraid you guys have enough time. Um, maybe I just uh, pause. One, you say that um, sure. culture is uh, is something uh, it's knowledge that is that is shared and exchanged, and I'm I'm wondering it is kind of the same as uh, as this meaning or as um, I'm wondering if it can be taught, as you say, um, why we have then this um, um, integration problems with uh, different cultures. It would be or the solution would, would be, be that, that we can actually teach people that come to us uh, our culture, and then there wouldn't be any any problem. Oh no, I wouldn't say that. I mean, teaching. Uh, I don't know if you've ever grown up, but I had little problems with my parents who were trying to teach me all kinds of things that I didn't believe in. So I think if you come to a foreign culture where they think you have to have at least uh, uh, three wives, or uh, that people. There is a woman who wants to marry not just you, but to other men. Oh, well, uh, that is something you still have, can have your own opinion about. Uh, yeah. uh, but it, it doesn't solve problems being taught. I don't think it's such, it makes you aware of what people say in your culture. But uh, it doesn't really, there's no necessity of you to believe in what they are saying, what they are teaching. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, 